right, we're going to take a look at chap uh, chapter 5, lesson 3, using proportional reasoning. The, um, this is really a lot of geometry in, in this particular lesson, and we have to kind of recall some of the vocabulary that we've learned in other years. Um, there's a theorem that says corresponding sides of similar polygons are proportional. Similar polygons are shapes that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. They can have the same size, but usually they don't. If they have the same shape and size, they're called congruent. So uh, one, of the, one of the properties of similar polygons is that they have angles that match up, um, that are congruent to each other. And the symbol for congruent angles is just um, like these two triangles. And this could be any polygon. Triangles are the simplest to use because they have the fewest sides of any polygon, so it's a great way to kind of present this. This angle is the same size as this angle because it has one arc going through it. And this would be, and I messed up here a little bit, this would be um, the small, the, this is the, the most acute angle of this triangle, it matches this one. And then the three arcs going through means these two angles match up. Corresponding sides are sides that are in the same relative position on a polygon. Um, always the shortest side of, of if the two triangles are similar, then their shortest sides correspond. So A is the shortest side in this triangle, it would correspond to E. B is the longest side, it would correspond to D. And, I'm sorry, C is the longest side, it corresponds to D. C and D correspond, leaving B and F to correspond. And corresponding sides are always opposite corresponding angles. It's easy to identify the corresponding angles. Um, because they'll either have a number that tells you what the angle size is, and that won't change. You could enlarge or shrink the shape. The angle size remains the same, but the length of the sides will change. So another way to see that D and C correspond is to see D is opposite this angle, whatever size that is. It's the same as this one. C is opposite that angle, so D and C have to correspond. To say they form proportions would be to say that D compared to C will be the same as, and since I put the side length of the smaller triangle at the top, I have to do it again here. E corresponds to A, because those are both the shortest sides. And then my other one would be uh, D, E, F would correspond to the one at, to B, because that is, um, opposite the, arc, the angle with the three marks, and also is the middle side, I think. Yeah, the middle side, the middle length. Um, the other, and we're going to do some work with numbers on this in a second, and I'm just going to erase this stuff off and make a little more space to work. So if you want to copy down these definitions, you can either pause it or just um, copy down as I'm presenting it. A scale model is, is a representation of an actual object with the same shape as the object, but not the same size. So you see that idea is really similar to the, the idea of similar polygons, but this could be the model of a, some of an actual thing like a tractor, or a car, or the model of a, a house, but it's just a small representation of that. Uh, leave this up here. I'm going to put some numbers in here, and let um, this be 20, let me say 20 units, let this be 15, and let A be 10 units. And if I know, and right now I can't tell you anything about the measurements of D, E, or F. If I knew one of these, I could figure out the other two, based on this idea of proportionality. So I'm going to say that D is 12 units. So I know that D compared to C, 12 Compare the 20, should equal E compared to A. I don't know what E is, but I'll just go ahead and use that letter. A is 10. So as long as I've done this accurately, and I think I did, I kind of had a little brain drain when I was putting it up there, but if it's not right, I'll find out. Um, the 12 to 20 compared, 12 compares to 20 the same way the length of B compares to 10. And we can use what we learned in the last lesson. Uh, actually, you can. You can, there's a couple ways you can go here. You can see that 10 is half of 20, so E should be half of 12. That's one way to do it, which should be 6. 
If I cross multiply, I would say that 20 e equals 12 times 10, and then I divide both sides by 20, and I kind of like this, I can cross off 110 here, and 2 tenths here, then 12, 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 12 six times, and that's another way to see that e would be 6, which I kind of really like that idea. Okay, so that's how you can, and I can figure out what um, f is. I can use the same proportion, 12 to 20 equals f to b, which is 15. So I can say 20 times f. This is a little harder to see. What, what do you multiply 15 by to get 20? So I'm going to go ahead and do the cross multiplying. 12 times 15, divide both sides by 20. Looking for some common factors. Let's see, 5 gives into 15. 3 times, 5 gives into 20. 4 times, and 4 gives into 4 one time, and 4 gives into 12 three times. So F must equal 9 units. So I'm trying to see if my answers are reasonable by saying, does this appear to be the long side? Yep. Is this the middle side? I believe it is. And is this the short side? And it is. And my numbers came out that way, so everything looks good. You do have to be careful. With corresponding signs sometimes are hard to identify, and that's what was causing me a little bit of a, a pause as I was working through it. Let's look at a scale model. Typically, sometimes you have pictures to help with scale models, but sometimes you just told something like, uh, there's, there's a model of something, and three inches on the model equals uh, two feet on the actual shape. So that's kind of a typical way you could, you could just see that scale. And suppose you wanted to represent nine feet. You wonder, now how many inches should I make something that's actually nine feet long? So you can set up a proportion. Three inches for every two feet is the same as uh, how many inches I'm using my I for nine feet. So there's my proportion. And again, I cross multiply, say two times I equals three times nine, divided by two. No common factors here, so I'm just going to say 3 times 9 is 27, and I'll have to do 27 divided by 2, which is going to be 13 and a half. So that would be 13 and a half inches to represent 9 feet. I'll probably an easier one if I could, would have started with um, how do you represent 8 feet. <clears throat> you could use the equal fractions property to solve this one. Multiply by 4, and that would be um, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 3 times 4 would be 12. So we take 12 inches to represent something that's 8 feet long. So that's how you use scale models. And it's a quick overview of 5-3 using proportional reasoning, which is, comes very intuitively for some of you. You just kind of think that way. And other, there's, it's not the only way to solve this problem, but it's still a great kind of skill to have. Thanks.